Welcome to Journaling with Nature, the podcast for those who want to turn curiosity into wonder, a pencil sketch into a rabbit hole of discovery, a moment of stillness into a life full of joy. I'm your host, Bethan Burton. Let's open the pages of our nature journals and explore this world together. Hello, this is episode six. Today, my guest is Tessina de Lille a biologist and nature artist born in Belgium and now living and raising a family in Germany. Our conversation centres around how Tessina juggles family life and a creative career in nature art. Tessina, hi, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, Thank you for having me here. I'm excited to talk to you. You're a biologist by training, and that comes through really strongly in your work. You create really accurate depictions of natural subjects. How did you come to do what you do? How did you make the journey from being a biologist to being a nature artist? I always liked drawing. Um, As a child, I, I guess everyone draws. Some people stop at some point, but I never really stop. Um, So I kind of kept doing that and also like, during my studies, I would um, draw like anatomical, whatever I would be learning, actually. Like it helps me to draw things to fix them in my head. Um, and then uh, at the end of my studies, I got pregnant, um, got my first child. And um, yeah, then I couldn't really do much with uh, science anymore because I was home for a while. And then, um, yeah, I just started painting like I started uh, picking up whatever I would like to paint and I just try it out uh, and that's how I got to it yeah and then by the second child it became more and eventually I thought like okay I'm gonna try doing something with that on a more professional level and that's how I got to it so from there you started a business and you created speckled hands art and I just love this, the name of your business. And for me, it conjures up images of an artist who's been splashing paint around and speckle, speckles of paint on her hands after being at the easel. Can you talk about the story behind the name of your business? I like the, I, I like speckles in general. Like, I don't know, some people like stripes, <laughs> I like speckles. Um, so when I came up with it, when I had to find a name, I was like trying to find something. I also tried to look for something which represent me in in a way like as a person um and um well i'm i'm a redhead and i'm covered with uh, freckles <laughs> and so are my hands and then i thought oh well actually that does look a little bit like paint speckles so that's how i came up with it um yeah i i like the name a lot like it's a bit long and i guess here in germany some people are just like don't really get it because they don't really know what speckles are okay but (laughs) I I I don't know when I came up with it I thought yeah this is nice I'm gonna keep it so that's how I came up with it it's perfect I love it so you live in Berlin in a two-bedroom apartment with your family you've got two kids your workspace is in your living room you're a working mum juggling life and art how do you manage to make all this work in a small space with two small children in a small amount of time to work how do you manage it well i'm it's definitely still a learning process i don't don't get as much work done as i would like to uh, right now i've been having quite some commissions at the, running at the moment and i've never had so many going at the same time and i feel like okay i took on too much they're taking much longer than i would like to But in a way, I've come to accept that this is just how my life is and how my work is. The thing is, like, I always keep telling myself or keep remembering myself that I only started painting because I had the kids. So I never allow myself to say, if I would not have kids, I could have done so much more. Because there would be a big chance I would never have been stuck at home for a year and having to having had so much time and opportunities to actually make art. So I always consider my children the reason I started art so intensively. So in a way, I'm just like, oh, well, this is just 
how my life is and yeah this is just it um the kids go to kindergarten uh, about yeah roughly three to two days a week right now they're going a bit longer but that's because i have these commissions so we have the opportunity to do more but in the ideal situation i bring them two to three days a week and then i keep those days for work really um so i'm always telling myself when the kids are away that's work time that's no household time that's yeah. work time <laughs> yeah that's um well my flat is really messy which it helps that it's so small because i can keep everything relatively okay <laughs> but um <laughs> it's not always easy it's more like putting priorities and then just figuring out the rest yes it's beautiful to have that perspective that the kids are the reason for your current career trajectory and to keep that in mind, that's really beautiful. I'm wondering when you're creating your nature art, what's your process? Do you work mostly from specimens? Do you work from photographs? Do you go outside? How do you go about creating a piece? I would love to work from specimens, but um, very often the subjects that I'm getting or the topics that I for commissions or, or of the choice that I'm choosing, um, they don't allow that because they are not present around me. So usually what I do is I first read about the species that I want to paint. So I usually take Wikipedia or something just to have like, I want to get to know the species that I'm going to work with. Partly because for me, it's really important that what I paint is accurate. So I want to know how tall is a plant? How wide does it become? How are the leaves standing? How are the branches standing? How are the flowers? Do flowers and fruits occur at the same time or not? It's all these kind of things I want to know, even though I may not represent them in my painting, but I do want to know my speech. And then I usually make a quick sketch um, and then I just start painting. Um, I have a few techniques of painting that I really like that gives a, an effect that I really um, like. So I'm just going for it. Um, sometimes it happens and I'm just at the end and I'm just like, this is nothing. <laughs> I have to start over again, which then I do. Yeah. But usually by creating such an, it, usually it's a project, a process. And in the end, I'm actually quite happy with it. And I do allow myself always to have a certain amount of, I have an idea of how it should look but I'm not fixed on it so in the end it always looks a little bit different and I like that because that's also a little bit how nature works you never really control it and I like that about also watercolor it's a nice medium to work with yes I was going to say that about watercolor watercolor is one that you can't really control you just got you you can do what you can and then you have to be flexible about that and your watercolors are your illustrations are really accurate biologically but they also really I find really whimsical like there's something elegant and fun and there's definitely an essence of you in there in that you have a very unified style. And you mentioned before that you have some techniques to your painting method. Do you want to talk about these techniques that you're talking about? Are they watercolor techniques? I honestly don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have never um, done any course or okay. any, like I've not even really done tutorials. Like I more looked at, at videos that of process videos and besides that I just tried a lot myself so I don't I guess what I'm doing is not something new like I didn't invent any new techniques because uh, I see by other artists that they're using the same techniques so I'm sure they must have a name or they must be documented somewhere but then um, I'm very personal about what I use like what I make is something that I should like and it's not something that I'm going to compared to others and I'm not gonna ask myself is this made correctly or is this technique used correctly it's like that I don't care about yeah yeah and what's your favorite what are your favorite tools to use so you mentioned watercolor is it mostly just watercolor and and a pencil do you have other tools um I have two brushes actually that I use almost uh, always I have um one thin brush it's 
such a handmade brush in handmade in Germany and um it has apparently squirrel hair. Mm -hmm. I found out recently that it exists with synthetic hair as well, which I like a little bit more because like I don't really like the idea that animals have to well lose their fur <laughs> for my brushes. So once I will get new ones, I will get the synthetic ones. But um I use a quite fine one to paint. And then I have a thicker one to like just use with water wash. Besides that, I just use watercolor. I don't have mm -hmm. many different brushes. I also don't have special sponges or stuff like that. Like it's really simple what I use. And I like that mm -hmm. because I can actually focus on what I'm making and not on what could I possibly be using. Yes, yes. I think it's easy to get distracted with fancy this and that, fancy art materials and and to not be using them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's also when I'm painting something, I also kind of forget about what else I could be using. Like I do have quite some brushes and I have like other types of brushes, but I just never end up using them because when I'm painting, I'm like just in this process of making and it's just, it works with the simple brushes that I have. Yeah. I don't have, I don't feel the need to add something else. I love that. You once wrote about yourself that as a child you wanted to be Tarzan and live in a tree house in a forest. <laughs> what were your childhood nature experiences like? I find that people who love nature and want to protect nature often have stories about deep experiences in nature as children. And I'm wondering, did you have a nature mentor or someone who took you out and invested in bringing nature into your life? Mm -hmm. To be honest, I can't really come up with anyone specific and not even like a specific experience I had in nature. Like as long as I can remember, I liked being outside. I was just such a typical outdoor kid and um, I didn't, like my dad is, well, my dad studied to be a forest ranger. So there was this, um, there was this interest in our family, definitely. But my mom hated camping, so we never went on a camping trip. So as a child, <laughs> like, maybe it was the fact that I never had it, that I just, that it became so big for me. Like, I was just, I wanted to go camping and I wanted to be out in nature. And somehow my mom was always like, oh, no, no, we're not doing it this year. <laughs> and eventually it never happened. But um, I guess I was raised in a family where they never saw nature as something bad or dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I was always allowed to do whatever I wanted in nature. We had a garden and I could climb trees. I could play in the mud. I could plant whatever I wanted. Um, we had bushes with berries so I could just eat them. Um, and I guess that in combination with also having a lot of nature books around the house. Um, because a lot of my stuff, uh, a lot of stuff from my dad's study was still lying around. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just had always access to these things. And yeah, then it just never went away. It was just this thing that always, always was there for me. It was always clear. I always loved biology. I always loved being outside. I, it was just, yeah, I mean, it was just always there. <laughs> so it was clear when you finished high school that you would go and study biology um, yeah, I I tried a semester of animal medicine. Mm -hmm. I really liked it, which then just it just didn't click. It was just too much. I mean, I liked the anatomy classes and stuff, but it was just too medical, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I did I did environmental science as a bachelor and ecology as a master, and I'm happy I made that switch because I guess it fits me much more. Like I'm much happier it was much broader um i could focus on the things that interest me much more like the actual just knowledge and not the medical part and how do you encourage your children now do you actively encourage them to connect with nature and and if you do how do you do that yeah i definitely do like i think um even though my children go to kindergarten and will go to school here i do think that home education is a really important part of a child's education um, and I think it goes really well alongside school education. And of course, I focus 
on nature and on art a lot. Um, for now, they're really small. They are two and four, uh, turning three and five very soon. And we just, I just encourage them to be outside a lot. Mm -hmm. And what I think is especially important is that they don't get afraid of nature. So that they get their hands dirty, that whenever they see a worm or something that they they are to pick it up and are not like, Ooh, what is that? Or a spider or something like that. Um, yes. I'm also like, I don't know, probably at some point they will dislike that, but I'm such a mom who's like, whenever we see something, I'm right away explaining what's happening. <laughs> I'm a real biologist. Yes. And then we had the quite funny story two days ago where we had a wasp inside. We have lots of wasps in our house at the moment. And then I explained, because they always come in and they fly first to the plants. And I explained, yeah, they're looking for insects because they are looking uh, to eat them. And then at some point there was a wasp like flying super close to my son's ear. And he was like, oh, mom, what are they? Silly. They are looking in my ear if they are insects. But there are no insects in my ear. <laughs> oh, so cute. Yeah, I, I was really happy that he was not right away super scared. Uh, I mean, I do tell them to be careful, of course. But I think for me, that's really important that the first step is that children just learn that nature is just there and that it's not dangerous. And besides that, we have a lot of nature in our house. We have, well, a lot of plants, but we also have lots of pine cones, shells, stones, sticks, whatever always comes in and it it can be used, it can be lying around. Um, we also have a lot of books. We have like real field guides that are mixed with the children's books so that they just get to know these type of books as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's wonderful. And so you say you have a lot of nature inside and around your home. I'm wondering, what do you see in nature when you step outside? You live in Berlin and I'm wondering what sort of nature you can access from where you are. Um, well, it's in a way it's a big city. So mm -hmm. there are no forests, there's no lake, there's no um, there's no river. Uh, in a way, that is a bit disappointing. I would like to live in an area which is a bit more wilder. Uh, but Berlin is also not too bad because of all the cities in Germany, Berlin is one of the wildest cities. We have a lot of old buildings that still allow for a lot of sparrows to make their nests for example we have one right out of the window and the kids could actually like see them build nests and bring nest material and wonderful so it's really cool um we also have a lot of parks in berlin and the parks in berlin are like i don't know they're just wild nobody cares it's just there you go there's trees and bushes and grass and just figure it out <laughs> there's nothing done to it um, it's not kept nice, which makes it really nice because it's really wild and there's quite a lot of stuff growing and living there. Uh, we even have some foxes, which is cool. Wow, that's cool in a city. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nice. It's um, it's very uncommon for cities. So I guess as a city, Berlin is not too bad. Do your kids like painting nature? Do you ever get out the paints with them and do nature painting? Uh, we do that in a way, but. As they are still so small, it's more that we paint outside. Yes. And then mm -hmm. I do like encourage them to, I don't know, paint a flower or a leaf that they see or an insect or something, which from time to time they're super excited and other times they're just like, no, I prefer painting whatever, a pie or something. Yes, of course. So I'm really relaxed about it and I don't, um, I don't want to push them at all because I want it to be something that they enjoy doing. Um, mm -hmm. Of course. But yeah, they can, I mean, sometimes they paint something really funky and it's like, mom, these are flowers or these are whatever. And like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So you have a connection with Australia where I'm from. Uh, so you're, you're Belgian, but you're living in Germany right now. And you, as a young adult, spent some time living with a Tasmanian family in Australia. Can you tell the story of your travels in Australia and how that came to be and also what sort of nature you saw around you in Tasmania? Well, um, at some point, I, my dad once told me that going to Australia is impossible. And I'm the kind of person who's <laughs> like, 
well, I'm going to show that it's not impossible. <laughs> so, when I was a teenager, I kind of like, well, kind of like put myself as aim, like when I'm done with my bachelor's, I'll go to Australia. And I had no plan. Why did he say it was impossible? Um, I don't know, because it's so far expensive. <laughs> it's I far know. away. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if he really meant it. It was just kind of like, he said a it once and it kind of got stuck in my head as a kid. <laughs> um. <laughs> So yeah, and then I just, um, I had no plan, which is also like a way, I, I traveled to the other side of the world with my backpack and I just arrived there and was just like going to a hostel, be like, hi, do you still have a room? And they're like, uh, no, you need to book that in advance. Like there are tons of backpackers here. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then when I was, I was there 10 years ago and it was this year that there were so many floods in Australia. So there was this, like, I think Brisbane was really flooded, um, Sydney at some point. And I just arrived there and I wanted two things. I wanted to go to Queensland and I wanted to go to Tasmania. Those were the two areas where I thought, okay, I definitely want to go there. So because the flooding was all over mainland Australia, I thought, okay, I'll go to Tassie. And that's how I yeah. ended up in Tasmania. And then I just, by luck, found a family through roofing um, that did blueberry picking. And I picked mm -hmm. blueberries because I somebody told me like, oh, if you pick on a farm, you don't like this fruit anymore after a while because you see it all the time. <laughs> and I didn't like blueberries, so I thought, okay, then I'm safe. <laughs> I ended up loving blueberries. So <laughs> I was gonna ask, did it change your mind? <laughs> oh, definitely. I love blueberries now. Uh, but yeah, and um, I never planned to stay so long, but it was such an amazing experience. And um, in a way, I was surprised how the Tasmanian climate felt familiar to me. That's interesting. Yeah, Tasmanian climate is rather mild. So I mm -hmm. was more like European climate than like actual mainland Australia is. Um, but I really, really love those huge gum trees that they have in Tasmania. And mm -hmm. um, I still remember the kookaburras who sound like if you have monkeys then like every woofer that would come would be like in Tasmania and um, <laughs> those things will like those things really are for me Tasmania um, yeah yeah oh that's beautiful it's so nice it's so nice to have experiences in other countries with other people and also notice things about nature in other countries and how it is similar and how it's different absolutely people often say that um, Tasmania is is very much like New Zealand and I found that too that there's something about it, it it's colder and it's wild and yeah yeah it was really really nice I've never been to New Zealand but um yeah when people tell me that it's similar to Tasmania I'm also like oh then I definitely should go check it out yeah it's definitely worth checking out it's a beautiful place and it's nature it's it's famous for its nature areas, but they're incredible. Yeah, that's really impressive because I, I come from Belgium and we have a very, very high population density. I don't know any numbers, but um, it's really high, especially for Europe. Mm -hmm. And then for me, nature was always something which was either difficult to be in or was very limited um, or you ha always had to share it with lots of people. Interesting. So for me, being in places where there's a lot of nature, where there are very few people, that's always very impressive. Yeah, and I guess that's also a bit what I had in Tasmania. Yes, yes, the population density down there is not high. No. But and when I was in, <laughs> when I was the age you were when you were in Tasmania, I did my overseas trip to New Zealand, oh. and I was. I was hiking around, I was hiking alone and it was the very first time I had ever spent whole days without seeing anyone because I was on an island called Stewart Island which is at the bottom of New Zealand and it was an amazing thing to go days without actually seeing another person and that was that felt pretty special. Mm, definitely. You mentioned before some big commissions. Are you able to talk about those or are they a surprise? No, I can I can talk a bit about them. Um, the biggest one that I'm having right now is um, six paintings. And it's um, for the waiting room of a dentist. 
And uh, oh wow! At first, I was a bit like, okay, how how is that linked to what I'm doing? But um, she requested something which includes fruits and vegetables, um, but in a natural setting. So not just like an apple on a plate or something, but like an apple Mm -hmm. on a tree or a branch. And um, so I'm combining fruits and vegetables with insects and herbs or just wild plants. Um, Because she's a dentist who focuses on children and she wants actually to like show children how things grow and the things that they know that's where it comes from. So I really like this idea and I thought, oh, that's nice. I'm... That's something I can, I love to do. That's really exciting. It's really exciting. I love the way in your work you do, you often do pieces that teach. So you'll do a beautiful artwork, but it has a teaching message behind it. And I, I really like that about your work. Thank you. It's, I guess that's the biologist in me. <laughs> <laughs> So you also have an Etsy shop and I'm wondering if you can let people know, let listeners know where they can find you online. Uh, sure. Um, you can definitely find me on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is Speckled Hands Art. And then um, there is also a link to my Etsy shop. I'm also working on a website, which as I'm not so good with technology, <laughs> takes a little longer than I thought, but okay, <laughs> we're getting there. Yeah, but right now I actually sell through Etsy and all the promotional work and all the connection with followers and people who are interested that I do through Instagram. Um, And I actually really like doing that because, like you said, I don't just make art to be beautiful. I really like it when I can tell something about it, when I can share the process, because it's not just like that, that it's an idea and it's there on paper. There's a process there. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes I start something and I'm just like, nope, can't do anything with this. I have to put it away. Um, And I like to share all that, actually. Yes, yes. So people can follow your whole process on Instagram from the beginning, from the initial sketches and how it's going. And then the final piece, that's something really special. Yeah, exactly. I actually have first-hand experience with your work because some time ago you were doing a giveaway on Instagram for your thousand followers when you got a thousand followers and I entered your giveaway and I won it and I was thrilled to win it and then you sent me this big parcel this big bundle of things and I was anticipating that there was going to be some prints and some postcards and stickers and it was so amazing to see your work arrive here in my hand And I suddenly thought, my goodness, she hasn't given me prints. She's given me originals. And I wrote to you and said, you were supposed to give me prints. And you said, "Um, those are prints. And I cannot believe, even after you said that to me, I went back to them and I looked and looked and looked. The quality of these prints is so beautiful. And it's printed on watercolor type paper. Even when I looked at it a second time, knowing it was a print, I didn't believe it. So that says something amazing about the quality of what you receive if you go to Tessina's Etsy store. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I I had a lot of, um, I looked at a lot of types of papers when I uh, decided which company to use to make my prints. And um, I can offer prints which are cheaper on like more simple paper. And when you just frame them and you just look at them, they will just look good. But art is also an experience. And I find it really important that I can offer prints that are also printed on watercolor paper. Um, because this texture, texture from the watercolor adds to the, I don't know, experience of looking at it. Like it's not entirely flat paper. The paper is like a bit structured and are textured and um yeah it's such things are important to me like i'm what i'm making is something which i put a lot of thought and love and precision in it and then i'm like well if i'm offering prints it has to be it has to represent it it cannot just be a print so yeah that's why i decided to go with this one company 
Yeah, the quality is very, very high and very, like you say, the experience of getting that and holding it and feeling the texture of the paper. Had, yeah, as I said, had me 100% convinced that it was <laughs> an original. Oh, well, um, to be honest, whenever I send a print out and I'm always like, if I could get the person who gets it to be so excited about watercolor or about biology or nature to actually pick it up themselves that would be the best like absolutely perfect and my world goal has been achieved um because that's a wonderful goal <laughs> thank you it's not just about like making something beautiful for the world it's something it's really about sharing a passion and it's like if i can make this experience more real by using this type of paper then i'm just definitely going for it yeah, that really comes through in your work that you are an educator as much as an artist, that you that you love nature and you want to you just offer it up in your work to other people as a way of helping them connect with nature, helping them experience what you experience in nature. Yeah, definitely that's really important to me. Thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. It was really fun. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Tessina. You can find the links to her Instagram page and Etsy store in the show notes for this episode. See you next week.